G'day everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now site columns versus list columns is the topic of today's video and why you should care uh, so that you can make an educated decision on what to use when. So first of all, site columns are reusable. So site columns can be reused across multiple lists or libraries within a single site collection. Obviously that ensures the consistency in the metadata and reduces the need for creating duplicate columns for each list or library that you want to use that same type of data for. Now they're centrally managed as well. So that is a, a big pro. So site columns allow for the centralized management and any changes made to a site col column, whether you're modifying the column name or the type or adding choice values or things like that will automatically propagate to all the lists and libraries that are using that column, which obviously simplifies the updates and the maintenance. Now I mentioned before the consistency and the standardization. So using site columns promotes this consistency and standardization across the site collection and obviously ensures that the same metadata structure is applied uniformly, which obviously aids again in the data integrity and the ease of use. Now, what are some downsides of site columns? Well, I guess setting up site columns may require more planning and admin effort and obviously an understanding of how to actually do that. And list columns are a little bit quicker to set up for individual lists as they don't require that coordination with other parts of the site collection as well. Now, in regards to permissions and scope limitations, so scope um, site columns are being obviously being accessible across an entire site collection can sometimes lead to unintended access if it's not managed properly. Now list columns on the other hand are confined to their specific list making it easier to control permissions and access on a more granular level. Now complexity in change, manage in change management is obviously is something again that needs to be considered. So uh, changes to site columns can impact multiple lists and libraries, which does necessitate thorough testing and coordination to avoid this disrupting uh, or disrupting existing content. Now list columns on the other hand allow for localized changes without affecting any other lists, making it easier to manage updates and modifications in a control controlled manner. So there's a little bit of the theory behind site columns and list columns. Let's now jump in and have a look at the difference and how we would use either one. So we can see here that I'm in a site collection. It's a SharePoint communication site. Now I'm going to pop into our document library here. So document library, nothing in it. This is out of the box. You can see that we've got some system metadata here. We've got the name, the modified, modified by. Now when we choose to add a column in this manner here, you can see that we can create a column on this library. Now there's multiple options that we've got available. So if we wanna choose a choice column here and we click next, then let's just call this status. We'll call this one new uh, and then we'll just add a couple of other options here. Um, uh, needs review and we'll just add another option here uh, and we'll go approved. So there's our status column. Now when we hit save, that's created what we call a list column. Now I can't use that status column across another list for example. So if I now create, uh, if I go back to the home page and I'll create a new document library and let's call this library policies and we'll now create. Now, if I wanna go ahead and have a status column in this library, I'm gonna to have to create a new column or replicate that column that I just created with the same values. Now, obviously that again, uh, as we mentioned before, could turn and lead into data inconsistency or things like that. Now, a better approach in that scenario is to use what's called a site column because we wanna reuse that across multiple different lists. So to create a site column, we need to go into uh, the site information information, we need to go into uh, the site settings. Now under our site settings under web designer galleries, we've got an option here where we can create um, a site column. Now when we click on site column, we'll be able to click the create button. So when we create in uh, this here, this is obviously making this available to the entire site. So let's call this uh, category. 
So we'll call this one category. Again, we're going to use a choice column. Now, if we're gonna use and have multiple and as a good practice, it will be a good idea to create a group so we can group all of our site columns together, making it easier to manage uh, in the site admin. So I'm going to uh, call this group called uh, Copilot uh, Studio Site Columns and we'll create this new group. So we've got a category here. So I'm going to go policies, um, I'll go, actually let's go policy, we'll go procedure, we'll go work instruction, and we'll go guide. Instruction and we'll go guide. So what we're going to do here is make this and we'll create that, we'll create it as a drop down. We won't have a default value and we'll click OK. And you can see it's already been uh, used. So it's given me a warning here. So I'm going to call this one document category. So let's go document category and click OK. And now we've created what we call a site column. Now, if I look at the groupings here, you can see there's my group, there's my site column. Now, what that allows me to do now is reuse and add that column across our uh, multiple different lists and libraries. So if I go into the library settings here and I'll go more library settings and you can see that I've got my columns section here. Now an option here is that we can add from existing site columns. So when I click on add from existing site columns, I can choose my group and then I can choose my document category column and I'll click OK. So now when I go to upload a file into this library. So I'll just grab a document and I'll drag that across uh, to my library and I'll wait for that to upload. It's uploading there and we're good. So I'm going to select this. I'll hit the information icon here. We've got our status, which remembering is our list column, but now I've got my document category here, which is a, uh, a site column. And you can see there, there is the document category. Now, the good thing about site columns is I can add that now to this library as well. Okay, so now if I go and do the same thing, I'll go to library settings, I'll go to more library settings, and then I'll go add from existing site columns and then I will choose my group. I'll click uh, that, drag that across, and we've got document category now added to my policies library. So now it, when I drag my file across and drop it into the policies library, we can see that I again have this column that I can choose what type of category this is going to fit into. And it's the same values. Now, if we wanted to add a value, then we only have to do that from a central location. So again, I'll go into my site information. I'll go to view all site settings. I'll go to my site columns. Now, this is going to take effect on any list or library that this column has been added to. So we can see here, I'll drag this down we might go uh, and add FAQ and we'll click OK. So now it's going to update any list or library that has that column. And just to double check, we'll go into documents, we'll select our document in the documents library, we'll pop down to document category and you can see that I've got the FAQ. Now the same thing's going to happen if I pop over to the policies library here and I go to document category, we can see that we've got our FAQ, FAQ change there. All right, so there we go. Being using a site column means that it's reusable, provides us with consistency in our metadata, whereas list columns, we add it to a list and it's contained just to that list that it's been added to. If we wanted to have that same column across multiple lists, then we would need to add that to multiple lists um, individually. Hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching. Site columns versus list columns. Uh, now you can decide which is best to use and when.